Master George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things video short. How do we know that our interpretation of Scripture alone is correct? That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, donate. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, like, subscribe, ring that bell, and if you want to help us, really help us, pass on the faith to the next generation, follow the link in the description, and donate a taxable, deductible gift today. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, donate. Pass on the faith to the next generation. That's what we do in Higher Things. Becca is discussing her faith with a friend of hers that is becoming a Roman Catholic. And she says to the friend, look, we as Lutherans believe in justification by grace through faith. And we also believe that what we believe as Lutherans come from the scripts comes from the scriptures alone. But the follow-up question to her scripture alone is, well, how do you know that you're interpreting the Bible correctly? Well, that sort of is a great question and a place for us to sort of think about the scriptures. So first, the reason why we believe that the scriptures are the only source and norm of everything we believe teaching is, it is confessed is because they say so. Uh, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof, for correction and instruction and in righteousness. The man of God may be perfect, fully, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And so... We believe that the scriptures are the inspired word of God and that God cannot err. He cannot lie to us. And so to read the scriptures is to read what God has to say about us. Um, and it's not just a circular argument, you know, because they say so, but it's also an argument based upon the suffering and death of Jesus. If Jesus is dead still, then the scriptures are, are the ravings of a madman. But if he's alive, well, then they're God-breathed words, um, inspired words, um, and not up to interpretation, 2 Peter 1.20. It's not something that you interpret something and I interpret something. God speaks through his prophets to us. And that interpretation is clear. So how do you know what you're saying is the word of God. Well, what we're interpreting is the right interpretation. Well, first, what Jesus says in his words, what God says in his word is God breathed. That's the first one. So first we establish that the reason why we're looking to the scriptures is because they're inspired word of God. And they're all, they're self-sufficient to tell us about God, the God who gave up his son. And, and it's not just a circular argument. It's a Jesus argument. He died and rose again. Second is that what is delivered in the scriptures centers around the suffering and death of Jesus. Um, it, it, it's not that we're looking for history or we're looking for stuff for ourselves or we're looking for, for how to live a life uh, worthy of the calling we've received. Most of all, we look at the scriptures and we see that these are the things which testify of him. And so a Christocentric view of the scriptures, because that's what Jesus tells us to do. And so first and foremost, when we open the scriptures up and we believe that they're the inspired word of God, we're looking for Jesus. What is not, what does this have to say about me? No, what does this have to say about Jesus for me? It calls me to repentance. It, it slays me, but it also makes me alive. And when it comes to reading the scriptures, we're going to always look at them in their proper context. Um, earlier this week, we had in the temptation, the devil quoting scripture. Well, how do we know the devil's wrong? What well, Jesus shows us. He shows us that the devil's wrong because what the devil is interpreting scripture to be doesn't line up with other scriptures. And so the way we know that the interpretation of scripture that we have is correct is that scripture in self is interpreted in scripture and around we go. Scripture interprets scripture, interprets scripture, interprets scripture. So no interpretation that we have can be divorced from what the scriptures themselves say. That's what Jesus does. Okay, that great interpretation of me doing a Peter Pan off the top of the temple and the angels catching me is great, except your whole temptation denies the second commandment and therefore 
uh, second and third commandment. And therefore, I, 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 I'm going to have to, I'm just going to have to not listen to you, devil. Lastly is context or third context. When you do the scripture interpret scripture thing, you go outward first. Is what the interpretation, does it match the context? Does it match what's going on in the text? Does it, does it match what is above it and below it? What is before it and afterwards in the pericopes? Is it, is everything sort of focused on what is going on and therefore not sort of pulled out of context, but remains in context? Lastly, have we checked all our thoughts about what the text says at the door and let the text read what it reads? And so first, we, we sort of identify that this is an inspired word of God. Two, we're looking for Jesus Christ and him crucified because he tells us to. Third, we're looking at it in the context and how scripture interprets itself, uh, starting inward and then outward. Uh, first within the same book and then out. How does what we just say agree with the context? And then how does it, uh, how does it agree with the whole of the scriptures? And lastly, is the role of tradition, which isn't on the same par as the, as, as the scriptures, but goes and helps us provide the context of the scriptures. And here's what I mean. Um, tradition in, the, in, in, in interpretation is the creed. Does what the interpretation say agree with the creed? Does it agree with what I was taught in church? Does it line up with what is taught in church? Not that the church is a check for it, but the church provides a, a sort of a context for how the scriptures uh, uh, occur. Um, the glasses per which we read the scriptures. Now, how is this different from the church being equal to it? Well, if a tradition inside the church doesn't agree with what's going on in the scriptures, that is trumped. That's different from Rome, where the scriptures and the tradition are side by side. What I'm saying about this is that is that the, the scriptures don't occur outside of the life of faith and the church. So any interpretation that you have that doesn't align with, with what is taught everywhere and always in the church is going to be a questionable interpretation. That last one is the weakest argument, but it also provides a context of how we read the scriptures, not divorced from the church, but in the life of the church and the life of faith. And so first off, sola scriptura, that's in the Bible and also proved by the resurrection of Christ. Secondly, um, we want to make sure that um, we're looking for Jesus because Jesus tells us to look for him. You search the scriptures looking where they would have life, but these are the things which testify of me. Third, we're going to look for context, first within a book and then outside of a book. Uh, first within um, the certain paragraphs and the like, and then in the, within chapters and books and the like. And finally, in the life of faith, the, uh, the scriptures occur in the life of faith, not divorced from it. And so how does what our interpretation agree with the rest of, of, of what we've been taught in church? And that is not tradition on the same par as scripture, because plenty of traditions in the church had to be reformed, changed and scrapped and that is still going on today but not something in the scriptures or some interpretation of the scriptures which is opposite of what has been taught always and everywhere in the church Becca I hope this helps I'm Pastor George Borkhart and a sleeping floor and this has been the Higher Things Video Short